All right, Dave, how else can we get some speed? What are, what are some of the things that, without us having to come to a, a level three class? So there's, there's lots of ways to increase speed, okay? From the body side of things, um, we've got to have a different lens to look through. A lot of us look at the best players in the world to create speed. What you've got to understand is the modern day golf swing isn't designed to create speed. It's to stabilize. We're locking the lower body down. We're trying to create the stretch against the lower body. Yes, they can hit it far, but they're trying to hit the fairway. They're trying to hit it accurate. If you really want to increase speed, you've got to look beyond that. You've got to look at this in a different way. So we've got to, if you think back, right, if you think about a couple of things you can do. We have this test that we do where basically if I take you on a launch monitor and I have you swing, I have you warm up, I have you hit five golf balls and I take your average. And then we have eight different things you can try. I will guarantee I can get you seven to 15 miles an hour more with one of these different swing techniques. And it's different than what you've been doing today, okay? And the reason being is because we keep thinking we should swing like the guys we see on television when that's not the case. Because if you actually look at guys that create speed, which we do, the world long drive guys, they don't swing like that. These guys lift their foot up. That's number one. You can lift your foot. You create a bigger hip turn, bigger shoulder turn, okay? You can bend your lead arm. As golf professionals, we would never tell somebody to do that. But if I've got somebody that's got difficulty getting speed, this is another way, another link in the kinematic sequence, another, another lever that I can create. So there's no reason if someone can't raise their arms up in the air and they can only get their swing to here, then they don't have much width. But if I bend the lead arm, I've taken the club considerably further back. I've given them more width. Now, the reason you don't see the best players in the world do that is because it's hard at a time. But remember, they already have speed. These are professional athletes that work on their body every day. Okay? Your average member, by bending the arm, they'll increase their speed. And they won't miss the fairway. They don't have enough to do that from that level. Okay? So that's one of them. The other ones you can do, you can spin the lead foot. You can change the foot position for the hip position. There's so many things that come into the owl world that are simple little ways that you can increase how far you hit the golf ball. For tour average? Uh, yeah, if they, they can find a lot more data than we do, and Dave could probably talk to it as well, but uh, we'll still see minus one to zero. I would say we're probably a fraction less right now if I compiled everybody across various brands, you know, you got a few guys that are up four, up five out there that are probably skewing it. We have a few less down four, down five guys. So I bet you if we did a recompile, we're probably closer to zero. But Dave, what are you seeing? Yeah, I mean, I see the same thing. I mean, I see, you know, on tour, they're trying to hit a shot or a shape. So they're usually zero to one down. Um, on the LPJ tour, it's completely different. Everybody's three to five up. World long drive, five to six up. So those guys are trying to launch it and maximize uh, reduce the spin as much as possible, get it in the air as, as high as possible. But on the tour, again, these guys are already built their base around speed. They're now trying to take that and learn to play shots and create shots. You know, there's the odd time that they'll stand on a hole where there's no trouble and somebody knows that they can get two or three up on it and get a little bit of extra distance, but you don't see that too often. I think, again, as, as we get into the older population, you should really be looking at numbers that are close to what they're doing, right? So a lot of times, as men, we don't want to look at the LPGA Tour numbers, but that's really the speeds that we should be looking at. And if you look at the equipment they're in with higher lofts, hitting more up on the ball, that's what we should really be teaching them, is looking at something that's equivalent. Who's got their speed that's playing professionally? Right? And it's probably down around the LPGA Tour where club head speeds are more 94, 95 Next miles an hour, 96 miles an hour, which, by the way, is probably the average amateur at your club. So should, we should be looking at their setup, their makeup in terms of launch. I think both of, the, both of the driver lines can still be fit in them, and definitely with the shorter shafts and the different shaft options, you can still help people get there, right? Yeah, and I think, you know, take that particular player, and I think that's where sometimes that 45 and a half inch works well, is you have a really good player that's just been declining in speed. They, they can still deliver the center of the face to the back of the ball, and they may be able to handle that length and might be able to pick up that one or two miles an hour that matter, matters a lot. And they might be that uh, player that with that longer shaft, we can get that attack angle to pitch maybe two to three degrees up, more like an LPGA player um, versus, okay, let's stay on top of it. Let's get that one down. Let's control face angle is they just want to send it. 